Well, one of the things about the common market is there has never been what an economist would call a cost-benefit analysis undertaken. That the reason for that is quite simple because, of course, it would have provided the wrong answer. It would have shown that the costs of our membership far exceeds any benefits that is likely to accrue to British people or the UK economy. And the reason for that is simple. The EU, never a common market before that, never has been an economic project. You have to go back to possibly the iron and coal and steel cooperation of the early 50s and you might see some economic justification then. But ever since then it has been a purely political project and continues to be so and in fact more so now than it ever ever has has been before. And this is, is very sad because it leads to phrases that feeds on itself and one of the phrases that irritates me most is we must have a seat at the top table. Well, who gets a seat at the top table? It's not me, it's not you, it's some well-paid diplomat and a couple of really sordid politicians, UK politicians. So really, all that these people are doing is feathering their own nest and they seem to think that they have a divine right to rule. It's a straight Old Etonian fallacy that we are born to rule and you are born to work and slave and do what we tell you. Well, I don't accept that. I never have and I never will. If you look for an economic justification for the common market, one of the things one could look at is employment. And you there find that actually, since 1973, employment of males, people, has been steadily falling in this country. It dropped roughly two and a half million since 1973. So there is no benefit in the employment statistics shown. It's the same if we look at our GDP, exports for uh, goods and services. Uh, but in the year before we joined, we were growing at roughly 5% a year. Afterwards, it was down to 3.9%. In the next 10 years, from 73 to 83. And then, if you go on further, it's become even weaker. So there's no benefit there. What has happened is we've seen a rise in foreign-born employment. Uh, in Up to 2008... Uh, we had roughly 29.5 million people in employment. And of these 29.5 million, there's roughly 4 million foreign born. So what we've seen, therefore, is a great benefit in for the Johnny Foreigner and nothing for a native British worker. This can be attributed, of course, to the British Foreign Office's mistaken policy of expanding the EU. It, it, they wanted to expand the EU in the hope that this would bring them lots of allies, in particular against the French, and would dilute the influence of the Franco-Prussian ruling axis. That hope. It hasn't worked. In fact, if anything, it's concentrated the power in France and Germany. And what have we lumbered with? We have just lumbered with a whole load of immigrants from these accession countries. And we are now going to suffer even more if Bulgaria and Romania join. I'm glad to see that at last the political elite in this country is waking up. But of course, their mind is being wonderfully concentrated by the fact that they will have to face an election in just over two years and the way things are going most of them are going to be out of a job so the fact that the ECEC or the EU has clearly destroyed British jobs is now coming home to roost politicians really only care about re-electing getting re-elected 
And when the threat is to their seat and to their personality, that's when really they will start to act in the interests of the British people. And let us hope it is not too late. Thank you.